Welcome to another edition of Diplomatic Channel. I am Amarachi Ubani. Our conversation on the politics in natural resources continues this week. You see, Africa has about a third of the world's mineral resources, but most of its citizens dwell in poverty and do not benefit from the wealth of its resources. Rather than focus on exploring these resources and sharing the wealth amongst its people, leaders try to amass the wealth for themselves and create problems among the common man, making him think his fellow common man is the reason why wealth and development has not come to his area. When exploring these resources, the communities are neglected. They do not share the wealth and oftentimes are left worse off than before any resources were found there. International charity organization Oxfam has done some work on this and has found that most African countries are not getting a fair share of the value of their mineral and hydrocarbon resources and that this is exacerbated by histories of poor governance and corruption. According to them, a few people continue to capture the profits from resources that should serve the majority of citizens' needs. Professor of Economics and Public Policy in the Blantvenek School of Government at the University of Oxford, Paul Collier, gives the examples of Botswana and Sierra Leone. 30 years ago, they both received enormous diamond income. Botswana succeeded in harnessing revenues from this for economic growth and became the fastest growing economy in the world. Sierra Leone, on the other hand, had a different experience. Revenues from the diamond trade fomented violent political contests which destroyed the society, the economy collapsed and the country is at the bottom of the Human Development Index. So we ask again, are Africa's natural resources a curse? Dr. Ditokumbo Pierce, a political analyst, joins us now. Are Africa's natural resources a curse? It is the paradox of poverty. Very rich in natural resources, some countries even rich in human capacity, and yes, poverty. Uh, it, in a way, it's, it's a curse if you don't know how to handle it. And the way it's worked for us, it's a problem. But which, if we get to the roots of the problem, we'll see why the problems are there. But yes, indeed, it's a, it's a major challenge. Whenever you, you know, it's like winning the lotto, you know? If you all of a sudden you become a billionaire, you know your life is changed. Mm -hmm. You know you are not safe anymore. You know you have to be very yeah, careful. The problem is managing all of that. Yeah, your children can't even go to school. <laughs> you know they have to have security. You, your your husband can go to the to the supermarket. You know you are not free anymore. So you have to develop a way to manage what you have. That's the challenge we have. Mm -hmm. So I, I know that geography plays a big role, you know, in the distribution of these resources. But what cannot, of course, influence how these resources are distributed. But could it be a plus for the continent that the fact, that, you know, the fact that these resources are distributed the way they are? Look, every, if you take a case like Nigeria, it's incredible. Incredible. I wish I had brought the chart, but you can check it out. Mm. Every state in Nigeria has not only cash crop, as we had in the First Republic, we didn't have these natural uh, mineral resources. We had cash crop mainly. Of course, you had tin, you had coal, but you had, we lived mainly, we survived on cash crop. Mm -hmm. Every state in Nigeria today has mineral resources that can sustain it. The problem is we are not tapping those mineral resources. That's what the problem is. And so there are some states that do not contribute to the national uh, pots, and they complain that you know, they don't have anything. There are some states that depend on handouts sure. from the federal government. Very, virtually, Yet you say that these states have resources. Virtually every state. 30 states out of the 36 states in the federation are bankrupt right now. Yet they have natural resources. They have natural resources. But to give you an example. If Undo State has financial problems, and I've heard the governor, former governor, Dr. Mimiko, mm -hmm. say this at a conference, that unless Nigeria is restructured, we're going to have problems. And that's the problem you have in many places, where the natural resources are there, and by law, the state cannot access those natural resources. Undo State is sitting on the large, second largest deposit of bitumen in the world. With the resources in Undo State, the whole of the Southwest will be developed, because when the oil, when the bitumen is in Undo State, it's also in Ugun State, it's in Oyo State, it's all around the area. Mm -hmm. 
the richest, second largest deposit in the world. But the constitution of this country, particularly the 1999 constitution, mm -hmm. does not allow the states to have direct access to these natural resources. By the way, there are more, you know, when we say restructure, people in the north think, oh, we are going to be shortchanged because we don't have resources. There are more natural resources, more mineral resources in the north than in the south. Do you know that um, Borno State has uranium? I mean, Nigeria is so blessed. Politics is the problem of Africa. Where there's no justice, there's no peace. Where there's no peace, there's no progress. That's the problem we have. And to whose benefit is it that these resources are not tapped? You just mentioned Ondo State, now they're sitting on the world's second largest deposit of Imo bitumen. State has gas galore. Enugu State has coal galore. These states, I told you, Zamfara has gold. There are so many resources in this country. The problem is the law. Oh, oh. The constitution, whereby all these resources, even geographical survey, is in the exclusive list. You know, it sounds so stupid. But this is the reality. We have had... You know, Aikwama has, Aikwama, a Ghanaian author, has this saying in one of his books. For how long will Africa be cursed with its leaders? I think we've had some leaders that are just, I don't know, they are cursed. They are the curse. <laughs> we'll, co we'll come back to Africa's leaders, um, uh, but I just wanted to ask, uh, why then do we have um, uh, developing countries endowed with natural resources? For instance, you have Angola. Um, with oil and so on, Niger Delta and Nigeria with also with oil, Sudan or South Sudan has to, uh, oil, the DRC has a large deposit of mineral resources that we, some of them we don't even know about, even Cote d'Ivoire. Then why do we have crisis in these countries? Because if you look at the pattern, that's just how it's building all across the continent. Well, well, is, it, is it deliberate? 